You're watching Higher Things Video Shorts with me, Pastor Chris Hall. If you're looking for an easy way to support Higher Things, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Also hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any Higher Things content. You can follow Higher Things on social media and our website over at www.higherthings.org. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, we ask that you remember us in your donations and prayers. Welcome back to Weeding Through History. Today we are going to talk about what was happening back in Wittenberg while Luther was at the Wartburg. So remember, Luther, the Diet of Worms, he didn't deny his confession, he didn't deny the faith, he confessed the truth, and he got in trouble, he got excommunicated, well, he's already kind of excommunicated, but he got outlawed now, so if anyone finds him, they can kill him. Frederick the Wise is like, no, not to my Martin, so he whisks him away to the Wartburg, not in like a romantic way, but you know, taking care of him, making sure nothing happens to him, whisks him away, kidnaps him, and takes him to the Wartburg. And remember, Luther stayed there. He translated the Bible into the German so that when he gets back, when he finally gets out, he can continue the work of pastoral care for the saints in at least electoral Saxony. So what's happening while he's there? Well, back in Wittenberg, he wasn't the only guy there, Luther. There were other guys there that taught. You had uh, Philip Melanchthon, you know, the right-hand man of the Reformation. I think there's someone affiliated with higher things that looks a lot like him. Maybe. I don't know. His beard is longer right now. Maybe once uh, Brother Finker cuts the beard down a little bit, you'll see it again. Maybe, maybe not. It's probably why he doesn't trim his beard anymore. But you have Philip Melanchthon there. Now, Melanchthon, he teaches languages. He's really smart. He came out uh, in 1521, the following year, with his Losi, which is like a, a dogmatic book. Smart, smart guy but not very dynamic, not very charismatic. At the same time in Wittenberg, there's another guy, actually a bunch of guys, but the main guy's name is Andreas Karlstadt. He also taught at the University of Wittenberg. He actually taught Luther a little bit. He's back there. You have a guy named Thomas Munzer. And the problem with these guys is they go a little further than Luther did when it comes to denying the things of Rome. They go really far out there. They even deny, and this is the big thing with these guys who became known as the Anabaptists. They deny external things can save you, like water, bread, and wine. So they deny the sacraments, or at least that the sacraments do something. They start communing in both kinds. Right before this, there's only communing in one kind, the body of Christ. They institute doing both kinds. Karlstadt does away with the vestments. There's rioting. There's all these things happening. And they make a big point that you have to experience the Holy Spirit. You have to feel the Holy Spirit. And one of the big things we call these guys nowadays, we don't call them Anabaptists as much anymore, but they're called enthusiasts. Enthusiasts. And an enthusiast doesn't put their trust in the external word of God, but in the feeling, the presence of the Holy Spirit in you. That's what the emphasis is for the enthusiasts. And we all feel this way. It's like, why do I go to church? Well, it made me feel better or something like that. So you have these guys back in Wittenberg, and they're causing trouble. Frederick the Wise, actually like in the movie Luther, it's wrong. It has there that Frederick the Wise says, sin for Luther. And if you ever watch the Luther movie with uh, Joseph Finnis and all those guys, the dude who plays Frederick the Wise also played, I believe it's the tiger from Robin Hood, right? Prince John from Robin Hood. Try getting through the Luther movie. Now, you're just going to imagine the dude with the crown that falls on his ears. It's pretty funny. So in the movie, he says, send for Luther. That doesn't happen. Luther escapes the Warburg. While he was at the Warburg, he didn't shave. Right before then, he had the monk's look. He had the cow. He had clean shaven. While he's at the Warburg, his hair grows out. He grows a big beard. So he disguises himself as Knight George, Junker George. And he escapes the Warper. He even goes to a bar or a pub, whatever you want to call it, near Wittenberg. And one of his friends even draws a picture of him and doesn't recognize him. And Luther goes, hey, it's me. <laughs> so Luther finally gets back to Wittenberg because he's heard all these things happening. while well, he's translating the Bible, working on the work of the Reformation. And all these other guys are destroying the faith. He comes and he doesn't go along with it. He doesn't say, yeah, let's 
And this is yet again another Luther. Sorry, as we go through this, you're going to see me critique the Luther movie, the new one at least. In the Luther movie, it has him charging back into town with a, a torch and he's going back, you people. He doesn't do that. In real life, what Luther did was he stepped into the pulpit. And this was Invocabit Sunday. Invocabit, vit. I've heard it both ways. First Sunday in Lent. And he starts preaching these sermons on holy living, on patience, on virtue, on being forgiven of our sins. Luther preaches and lets, God, lets God's word do the work. It's not for him to take something over. It's for God's word to do the work. And that's what the Reformation's all about, is getting out of the way and knowing that God's word alone does everything. Faith alone. It's not what we do, but what God does for us. So Luther brings the Bible back with him, preaches the word, and continues the work of the Reformation. But now he has not just Rome as an opponent. Now he also has the enthusiasts, Karl Stott, Munzer, and others. And it's just going to keep going from there. And it's fun times. God bless y'all. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.